Then said they all, Art thou then the Son of God? And he said unto them, Ye say that I am. And they said, What need we any further witness? For we ourselves have heard of his own mouth. And the whole multitude of them arose and led him unto Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Khazar, saying that he himself is Christ a king. And Pilate asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, Thou sayest. See, these things aren't things that uh, Jesus claimed for himself. Then said Pilate unto the chief priests and to the people, I find no fault in this man. And they were the more fierce, saying, He stirreth up the people, teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man were a uh, Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged unto Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself also was at Jerusalem at the time. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceedingly glad, for he was desirous to see him of a long season, because he had heard many things of him, and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. Then he questioned with him in many words, but he answered him nothing. And the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him. And Herod, with his men of war, set him at naught and mocked him and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe and sent him again to Pilate. And the same day Pilate and Herod were made friends together, for before they were at enmity between themselves. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me as one that perverteth the people. And behold, I, having examined him before you, I found no fault in this man, touching those things whereof ye accuse him. No, nor yet Herod, for I sent you to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. I will therefore chastise him and release him, for of necessity he must release one unto them at the feast. Now, I don't know what lines were added in later generations or not. Um, the canonical gospel started out as 19 chapters. There's things added and taken away, like I don't think any other book in history, really. Um, and they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man! and release unto us Barabbas, for, who, for a certain sedition made in the city, and for murder was cast into prison. Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus, spoke again to them. And, and they cried, Crucify him! Crucify him! And he said unto them the third time, why, what evil hath he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. And they were instant with loud voices, requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. That's kind of unfitting of Pilate, but... Um, and, you know, it wasn't till the second century that some of these details, you know made it their way into the story. Um, no one knew these claims until Pilate was long dead and gone. Um, the crucifixion of Jesus. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. And he released unto them that for sedition and murder was cast into prison whom they had desired. But 
he delivered Jesus to their will. And as they led him away, they laid hold upon one Simon, a Cyrenian, coming out of the country, and on him they laid the cross, that he might bear it after Jesus. And there followed him a great company of people, and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, returning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves, and for your children. For behold, the days are coming, in which they shall say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the paps which never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? And there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. You know, Golgotha, you know. Um, and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left, then said, Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots, and the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be the Christ, the chosen of God. Well, none of the messiahs, was it, you know, just their power and, you know, um, oh, if we kill them, they're not a prophet. It's like, that's, that's garbage. Um, and the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superinscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. One of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other, answering, rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Now, when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. And all the people that came together to that sight, beholding the things which were done, smote their breasts and returned. And all his acquaintance and the women that followed him from Galilee stood afar off, beholding these things. And behold, there was a man named Joseph, a counselor, and he was a good man and a just. The same had not consented to the counsel and deed of them. He was of Ari Matha'a, a city of the Jews who also himself waited for the kingdom of God. This man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus, and he took it down and wrapped it in a linen and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone, wherein never man before was laid. And that day was the preparation, and the Sabbath drew on. And the women also which came with him from Galilee followed after, and beheld the sepulchre, how his body was laid. 
and they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. So, skipping a day rather than three days, right? Uh, the resurrection of Jesus. Um, Pilate, if he heard this, that, oh, people are going to claim that he was resurrected or maybe didn't die at all, um, letting someone take the body of, was says, I'm not taking that risk. I don't know what these, you know. Um, now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre, and they entered in, and they found not the body of the Lord Jesus, you know, spiritual master Jesus, rabbi Jesus, you know, however you're going to say that. And it came to pass, as they were very much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments, as they were afraid, and bowed their faces to the earth. He said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He was not here but is risen, remembering how he spoke unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day risen again. And they remembered his words, and returned from the sepulcher, and told all these things unto the eleven, and to the rest it was Mary Magdalene, and Joanna, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles, and the words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Then arose Peter, and ran unto the sepulchre, and stooping down he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass, and behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about threescore furlongs, and they talked together of all these things which had happened, and it came to pass that, while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were held that they should not know him, and he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another, as ye walk and are sad. And the one of them whose name was Threpas, answering, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass here in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death, and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre, and when they found not his body, they came, saying that he had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive, and certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre, and found it even so, as the women had said, but him they saw not. Now, they didn't understand how messiahs save is they pave a way to, for people to make the right choices. They set a good example. Um, but it's what the people choose to do about it, right? Doesn't The, the Bible says that Cyrus the Great was a Messiah, but uh, his example of tolerance and justice did the Jews of the time, pick that up. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart, to be leave all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things, and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village 
whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them, and it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it, and broke, and gave to them, and their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight, and they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us, while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? And they arose the same hour, and returned to Jerusalem, and found the eleven gathered together, and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed, he hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way, and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. Well, good time for my stomach to rumble, right? And as they spoke thus, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted, and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled, and why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they had yet believed, not for joy, and wondered, and said unto them, Have ye hear any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of a honeycomb, and he took it and did eat before them. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and arise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen. So it's the mission from God and Jesus being the representative and they're spreading the word of the representative. 